Yeah, and it looks so good, but behind everything like I have accomplished now, I also received a lot of no's. Like I got rejected a million times, but as I always say, like it's it's not rejection, it's redirection. Yeah. Yeah. So that I feel like maybe they rejected this time, but then so what happened one time actually like i think this is a perfect example it's like they said no to a casting and i was really sad i really really wanted to walk for that show right but they invited me as like an influencer to go and watch it and i was i was front row and it was amazing and i met a lot of people that day and if i would have walked i never would have met them and it was so important that i met them that day so i feel like that was the reason why Hi everyone, welcome back to another podcast of Zen and Now, the show where we explore the world of wellness, mental health and living, and healthy living. Today we have a very special guest, someone who at the tender age of 18 has already made a, a name for herself in, uh, as a fashion influencer and a runway model. Uh, please help me welcome Bridget Jimeno, is that how you say it? Yeah, Okay. Awesome, awesome. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. So Bridget, uh, can you just give us a little bit of a background into like, you know, your upbringing, where you're from, you know, and how you, how, you know, you, you came to Canada, and how you got into fashion? Yeah, so I moved to Toronto about a year and a half ago, but I'm originally from Guatemala, born and raised. I lived there for my whole life. So I feel like moving here is very different, but I feel like that's also what helped me change what I'm doing to what I'm doing now. So I first started as a ballerina and that's what I thought I was going to do for my whole life for at least the last 13 years that I did ballet and almost any kind of dance to be honest. And then I transitioned into fashion and all of that when I moved to Cancun that I lived there for maybe like two years before I came to Toronto. Oh, okay. So you said you lived in Cancun. Was that out of choice or was that because you you, you, you move uh, for family reasons. So my mom uh, wanted to see us because she was doing all the paperwork here in Toronto. So she wasn't able to go back to Guatemala because there was like COVID and all of that. So the easiest right. way was to go to Mexico. So we all went there just for a vacation for a month. And then we extended it for two years, almost two years. And then that's almost how it happened. We just wanted to stay there while we got like the visa and all of that. Right. So. How did it feel like being away from your mom and parents? And you know, how, how, how it did, was how did you feel? kind of weird, but at the same because I was so used to living just with my mom okay. and like visiting my dad, but it was like like it was all the way around. So I was living with my dad, and it was like a new experience. So I guess it was like also nice to connect more with my dad because I lived with him for a while, and I did miss my mom a lot. But I think like I had so much going on that like I didn't really felt like that absence because I was talking to her all the time and I was still with all my siblings. So it was like, it, it wasn't bad, but I did miss her a lot. Yeah, I know. I like speaking to her before she, like you guys came over. Um, mm -hmm. For listeners who don't know, it's uh, Carolina Zhelenova's daughter. Uh, she's She was on my previous uh, episodes, uh, so check it out as well. So... Um, yeah, just talking to her as well when we met her, like she was super like, you know, uh, stressed about getting you guys over. And, like it was also lonely for her, I think. Um, but now you guys coming over, I think, uh, I think everyone is happy. Yeah, we are. I think it's, I feel like it was worth the wait, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I know at times it gets anxious when you're in that moment. I think, but when, when it, everything happens, when it should, I think you feel a sense of that sense of relief, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is honestly so worth everything. Right. We measure. So going back to like ballet, what made you fall in love with ballet, and you know, what, how did you when ballet? I said you said you had an injury, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Was it like a like a, a serious injury that 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 made you stop ballet? Yeah. So it was like something that got worse with time. So I started ballet when I was very young. I was like maybe three, four years old. I honestly didn't thought much of it, but that was like my whole life almost. Like 
I didn't try any other sport because I was like so into that. And I was also really good. So I feel like that also makes you love the sport more. Right. Because every time I had a challenge, I would always overcome it really fast. And I always had like this gift where I was like very flexible. And I was like the example for many young girls, even though I was young too, but like the little girls always wanted to do what I was doing. So it was like very nice to see that as well. So after being in that academy for a pretty long time, I moved to Cancun, but like I didn't have the chance to really say goodbye or like do like a proper, like do Except, proper yeah. Yeah. yeah, like a proper because adios, yeah. <laughs> it's like I was supposed to go for just one month and I didn't go back until this year. So it was like four, no, three years that I didn't talk to them at all. I just left. I feel kind of bad, but I feel like. There was so much going on. I just feel yeah. like I was starting again. But when I started doing ballet and dance again in Cancun, I went to an academy as well. It was really weird because like what I liked about it was I like, had my friends. So I made new friends right. and everyone was really nice, honestly. And I saw a lot of like better dancers. So that also made me better because when I was there, I feel like I was always the best one. And when I went to Cancun, like, there were other people that were, like, a little better than me or in my same level. So that was also, like, good for to challenge myself right, right. and to always stay in that comfort zone, in the sense. Right, right. Well, and throughout all that time that I was dancing, I constantly, my knee was, like, dislocating. It's so, like, my knee will, like, pop out and come back. Like, it was really fast and... It was very painful every single time, but I feel like it happened many times. Like, right, right. It was often like, yeah. Did you see like any specialist for it? Or, um, honestly, I did tell my dad and my mom, but they never believed in me. They always said like, "No, you're just fully having a cramp. It's not that bad." And they just never actually trusted like it was real because they right. thought I was just exaggerating to get attention or something. I don't know. They never really took me seriously whenever I told them about that. So what I used to do was I pull like um, some like kneecaps, I think so. yeah. just to like have that security and that always helped. But whenever it was a show or I had to do rehearsals, I couldn't wear them because of like the costume, it had tights and it could get stuck and I would like oh. rip them off. So I was had to be careful like to, with a costume and all of that. So that it usually happened when I, were, I was not using them. But it still happened in ballet. It usually happened, and little by little, it just kept getting like a little bit worse until it got into my other knee because it was always on the right, on the left knee. So and it started it compensating. Yeah, it started to like yeah. Your your started stronger knee started to take uh, a lot of the the pressure. I mean, a lot of the support from the from the one that was weaker. The day that it happened, it all happened. It was the day of the show, so it was what I worked this whole time for. Like like three months preparation every day, like almost three hours a day, just doing rehearsals. And then that day I was in my second dance because I was doing like four dances in the show. So in the second dance, I did a trick and my knee popped out, but it didn't come back that time. Like oh, you just, no. so my kneecap just was dislocated and it stayed like that and I, it didn't come back that time. Because I guess like so many times happen, like you, you reach right. like a lip. So then they, I didn't know what to do. I was trying to tell everyone, but I didn't want to like make a scene. So I was trying just to be like smooth God. in a way, but it was so horrible. And I feel like that memory is still like, it's so vivid in my head. Like I feel like I can relieve it every time. Right. We think about it, but I feel like it's been two years already. So I feel like I'm already in peace. Oh, so it's, still, it's still fresh. Like it's still very, uh, it's still yeah. very new. So do you have like yeah. any, uh, do you have any like issues with it now or are you okay with it now it's it's much better i feel like sometimes like whenever i see videos of me dancing or see yeah. someone dancing i get really anxious like i get like I'll, whenever i see shows or ballet or they do something right like it's like that's gonna happen to them so it's like it gets me anxious like oh what if that happens to them like it's right, scary. right. yeah but after that like a doctor came like 10 minutes after and that was really bad for me because it got really, really like, um, yeah, it was just okay. terrible.
for it because of that amount of time that I was waiting to put it back. Yeah. I guess. And then I just went to a doctor. They put me, like, um, they put something for my leg so I couldn't, like, move it. I'm not sure what the name of that is. And then I came home and I was crying the whole way. I was just full on crying every single day. I was so, like, I, I, I didn't know what to do. Right. And I feel like I couldn't walk. So I was like, if I can't walk right now, how far is it going to be to dance? Right. right. And then I, it kind of went through like that for maybe a week of just staying, like doing a lot of like, well, just resting a lot. Yeah. And then um, my mom called like a physiotherapist and she was my savior. I She was like everything to me because she was also very wise. Like she was very smart. So. Right. No that she was like really good at what you know what she had to do, which I needed to do like electro oh like electrolysis yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. well sometimes they put like little like needles needles yeah yeah like, they will move them or they will put like the electricity in the needle stuff like that it was horrible I can I was always like this whenever they were doing it because I can't well, I can't see right but it was it was like also like painful like like it was always like physically and mentally very hard for me to like overcome all of that but i managed to do it which is great and after that i remember like the first time i was able to walk it was so weird i couldn't do it like so it's kind of weird how i couldn't walk and then now almost what i do is walk in walk. a different way it's kind of it's so yeah. weird but, so it's, yeah. it's so weird the way the universe works eh? yeah <laughs> I do think, yeah. No, but uh, you know, kudos to you for you know not not giving up and just uh, you know pursuing another dream that you've always mm-hmm. had. I, I'm pretty much sure, like I'm pretty sure, like you had fashion on the other side of ballet. You know, yeah. But you, like, you had I full focus on ballet, yeah. At the yeah, time. I always wanted to do like the cute outfits. Yeah. Or like I always had like that fashion sense, but I didn't take it like as serious as I took it now. Right. Right. Do you have any like uh, fond memories of ballet? You know, something that you, you know, you take you take with you now in your in your in your new passion. Yeah, I think like the posture and not only like like the posture and being able to control your body in a sense. Right. Like if I see a video of me walking and I know how to like put my fingers like this and I'll put like. Right. All over the place, like I know very well how to control my body in a way. Right. So, so, so like, ballet gave you a gave you gave you some of like the foundations. For yeah, what you I do think now. That, that helps a lot right. because if I can do different types of walks because of ballet, because like people find it kind of harder to do like a certain type of walk, which is like more aggressive and stuff like that, because it's hard for them to move their body in that like coordination because you need right. to do like a bunch of stuff at the same time for it to look good. It looks like so so easy until you do right. it to be honest. It gives you a bit of grace as well, you know, the grace and, yeah. and poise when you're, when you're walking as well. And I think yeah. also it gives you a, a bunch of, a, a, a wider range to work with. Yeah. I think to, also like, like the, the being on, on stage is also less scary. Right. Because when I used to dance, I had to remember the whole choreography and make sure the tricks were right. Right. I didn't trip or I didn't, you know, miss where I was supposed to be standing. And here I just need to walk pose. Yeah. And it's, it's a lot different, but it definitely helped with like all like the nerves of going on stage. How did you cope mentally with that, you know, with your knee, with your knee injury? And then mm-hmm. I feel like when that happened i was just like very depressed honestly i don't know it was so hard like when people came to visit they would make me feel like even worse because they were like i'm so sorry for you or like they were like treating me like if i died for a second so it was like like it it felt really weird Mm -hmm. but it was it was really hard whenever no one was around too because my brother was away because he was in a soccer tournament in Europe. And my mom, of course, like she was working all the time. So I didn't really have anyone to be with me. So I was pretty much like dealing it with like myself. I didn't have any sort of like support more than myself. And whenever my physiotherapist came, that's what helped me because 
I was talking to her about how I was feeling and she was like, no, but like, you're going to be fine. She just told me a lot of like good advices of life and she was very sweet. So I think right. she was like the, one of the reasons why I was able to overcome all of that like sadness and like, I was also really angry at myself. Like I was, I don't know if I just cut off, but um, I was pretty angry at myself too. Like it was like a mix of those because I was like, oh, this is your fault. You should be more careful. Like. I was always judging me for what yeah. happened. You went, through, you went through the five stages of grief. Oh, oh. Yeah, I, d I definitely did. Before we continue with today's episode, if you're enjoying it, if I could ask you for a small favor, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It will not only help the channel grow, but it will also allow me to bring you a lot more guests and a lot more experiences. Thank you. Back to the show. Where are you now mentally? Are you much here, yeah, much? in a much calmer space, are you much much positive space in my uh, yeah. right now? I am. I feel like I completely changed right. in these two years and I also feel like I, whenever I was learning something, it was always in English, so I feel like I reinvented myself when I came here because everything that I saw is in English and now I talk English as like almost my first language, even though Spanish is my first language, it's like transition into that also made me feel like okay I can build a new me that's not sad about this but I can make something out of it it's not just like right. looking at bad things but I also really always say like it wasn't like a re rejection it's a redirection so I whenever I say that it just makes me think about if that didn't happen I wouldn't be where I am right now I think yeah yeah we have to go through something to bring us to where we are you know, yeah. What did they say? Grow to go. It's it's a it's one of the sayings. I can't really get it right now, but it's something about growing. You know, growing mm -hmm. as a as a person when you go through trauma or you go through a traumatic event. You know, I do believe you speak a bit of French as well, right? Yeah, but it's, it's kind of bad, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's more than that's more than many people. So <laughs> yeah. So does that, does languages also help you? You know. In your in your everyday life, or in your in your when you when you're doing shows and you kind of like need to communicate with other people, does everything? Yeah, no one really talks English, like Spanish, <laughs> but <laughs> they have to say like something Spanish by accident. But um, so it's like it was at first kind of hard because I'm like I'm not socially in English, like I don't know much, like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to talk that well. But then it was fine and whenever I find someone that's like Spanish, we connect even more. So it's also like, I, I never really saw it as a barrier because right. I always liked to talk in English for some reason. I don't know why. I feel like it's kind of fun to talk another language and to be another version of you. Yeah. Uh, it's good to learn. It's good to have uh, different perspectives as well. When you chat to people also in their vernacular, you, know, mm -hmm. you get a different perspective from them. Like I know sometimes you get, when you're speaking to somebody in, in not their first language, some of the conversation gets lost in translation a bit. Yeah. Or like fluent in a, in, a, in a specific language, you know, you can get a bit of a more fluent conversation going. Yeah, and I never really have much of like a barrier between like languages, but right. whenever someone's from another place and they don't speak that well, I completely get it because I was there first, like two, so. That also helps a lot, yeah. yeah. Amazing. So I want to talk about your transition from from ballet to fashion to being a runway model. Like, what what was that? What was the moment that made you decide, okay, this is where I want to be, or this is where I want to go? Yeah, I remember that moment perfectly. I feel like it was um, so after my degree, a lot of time passes, and my mom got invited to a fashion show. And there was this photographer, he was a bit of like a creep kind of guy, but it was <laughs> okay. okay. I realized later on. But when I was there, he was like, oh, let me take some pictures of you. And I was like, oh, okay. Like that never happened before. So I was like very excited. Oh, yeah. So this photographer wanted to take a picture. And I kind of thought my mom took some like video of like the backstage or what it looked like. And I was like, wait, is that me? Like I looked really like confident like very different so that day I was like maybe I should do this 
like the pictures are not great. I look great. Right. So, and also like my stepfather was like, I think you have something. Like you have potential in this. Like, and you should try to pursue it like a little bit more seriously. And then like I started a, like a secret TikTok account, posting like outfits. Like whenever I went to Sarah, I will find this cute dress and I will post it. And this one my first viral video was. It had like five hundred thousand views. For me, it was like insane. I was like, wow, this is really great. And I didn't grow as many followers like that fast, but I was having videos. I was like, very excited. And that's when I was like, okay, maybe I should do more of this. And I was just post like more like aesthetically videos of whenever I traveled or whenever I went to a restaurant and just like nothing related to modeling or, or doing walks, to be honest. But that but then when I moved here, I remember I think I, I went to a casting, but I never posted anything about my walks ever. So I went to a casting, but I was like, oh, this looks like really good. And I posted like my progress for, like before and after of my walk because I had to do like online casting. So I had to send a video and that went like a little bit viral. It had like 20,000 and I was like, oh my God, I should post more. Yeah. And then I posted more and more. Well, like time to time, but I realized like, okay, every time I post walking, it has views every single time. Mm -hmm. So I started to do it like just that. And that's when I grew like this. I had 5,000 followers in November. And I was like, okay, by, the, no, by December, I want to have 10K. And I was like, no, that's insane. Like, how is that going to happen? But I was just like, maybe, just maybe. What made me grow so that made, I was like, where I needed to be. So I went right. to a lot of like, shows and met so many people and that also really helped with like getting more shows and getting connections, like really be open to talk to everyone right. and really getting the work to get where you want to be because it's not as easy as it looks to be honest. Like I really was doing everything by myself and it was just like the biggest support in a sense was my mom because she was the one who will take me everywhere because if I didn't have anywhere to go, anywhere right like how was i supposed to get there without my mom so i did feel like she was just there to give me support and to just like be there and i'll always bring her big events so that's also a way like she got to meet a lot of people as well yeah and after it's, that i it's i want your network right it's sorry building. i say it's building your network it's just building up those those connections oh, yes. for like for like future Future yeah, that, and like just to grow your brand. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important too. Like if you are going out, you need to talk to everyone and really be like open to know the person as well. Like sometimes you will see like, oh, I need to network because I need connections. But sometimes it's like you want to genuinely meet people just because I feel like that also fulfills me in a way to talk to people and be social which is so different from myself before because I was very introverted I never talked to anyone in school and I was like I had very few friends I was very like that when I was four so that's when I say like I reinvented myself because I so different to when I when I was young but going back to that like I started posting more walks and then one day one video got 12 million views what? which is insane yeah that's and <laughs> from that I, I got like 40,000 followers just from that video wow. and then I was like no I tuned I'm gonna have 100k and once I I grew that like in six months when it took me two years to get to 5,000 I need to hire you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to grow my brand yeah, like, <laughs> get, my, was, get my numbers up <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was like, and now I help other people build their brands as well. But you're saying like, mm -hmm. just amazing, like how, you know, just by you being yourself, you started helping others, right? Like gain that self-confidence. I, I know myself as well, like going to go through that, those stages in life where you're like super conscious, you're like so like an introvert, you don't want to like, you know, talk to anybody. You're like afraid to like express yourself. And then in a moment, something happens in your life and, you know, you, you truly then shine. Your, 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 your personality comes out, your, you know, your self-confidence starts to rise. And, and that in itself, like, starts to mentally and physically start to better mm -hmm. yourself, you know. So I think where, where you, like you said, there's moments in our life that, that just 
trigger that that self confidence, and uh, you just start to shine, and you just start to like be this person that you never thought you'd ever be. Yeah, and it looks all good, but behind everything like I have accomplished now, I also received a lot of no's. Like I got rejected a million times, but as I always say, like it's it's not rejection, it's redirection. Yeah. Yeah. So that I feel like maybe they rejected this time, but then so what happened one time actually like I think this is a perfect example. It's like they said no to a casting, and I was really sad. I really really wanted to walk for that show, right. but they invited me as like an influencer to go and watch it. And I was I was front row, and it was amazing. And I met a lot of people that day. And if I would have walked, I never m- would have met them. And it was so important that I met them that day. So I feel like. That was the reason why I didn't walk with it and I, and I attended instead. So that's kind of what I liked about what I do is that I kind of go on both roles. It's not just, I'm just going to stick on being an influencer and just going front row and just watch the shows, but I also like to being able to walk in them and see what's behind it. So I love to be able to see both parts of that world. Right. And how does it feel when you're like on the runway it, and, you know, just being you, how does it feel? I feel like it's nice whenever they let you be you because sometimes they want you to do like slower walk or do specific things. So you, you have to like fit that, what they want with being yourself. But whenever they fully let you be, it's like the nicest feeling. So it's really, really nice. Like it's, it's like, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's really nice to like, go and just shine and see everyone there and look at the camera and shine but i think it's like also like you get into a certain like so like you just close your eyes and then you're like into yeah. like that model mood and then you after that i'm like fun and again it's like a whole different person whenever i'm in the runway and then yeah. when i'm here but that's just being professional right that's just you being passionate about your craft and you're giving mm-hmm. your you're giving everything towards that craft and i think that's important and that's why you're doing so well because you're giving your hundred percent and you're not uh, you're not like just there for the moment you're actually embracing it you you're in it and you want to be there and the camera like like you say like it's when you're in front of that camera your whole personality you just become a different person like i'm worth being doing what i'm doing sometimes and i feel like that comes from how i used to think before because i always thought like i was enough to do anything like i never had like that self-worth that i have now Sometimes that comes back and then like I try to go back and remember who I am and just, you know, sometimes I'll just like look at podcasts like this, you know, a lot. And I feel like that also helps because sometimes you feel like that self-doubt, like still, it's still there even though you've done so much. And that helps to like look at the pictures and everything that I'm like, oh yeah, that's me. I forget like that's how it looked like. And some days you have bad days and good days, but you have those bad days to learn and to be grateful for the good days, if that makes sense. No, that totally makes sense. Not every day is the same day. You're not gonna have the yeah. same type of confidence. You know, you're gonna have days where you're just feeling like you just you don't want to do anything. And there's some days when you just have the energy to to go and you know, just crush everything in front of you, uh, and that's okay. That's that's how human beings are. That's I think we put so much so much so much of pressure on ourselves to be perfect every single day and not have anything go wrong. Uh, and when those do th- when those days do come along, at least now when you've like gone through and had those experiences, those traumatic experiences, you know it's not so bad. I am able to navigate and I am able to come out on the other side. And you know, nothing is nothing is permanent in life. Everything is temporary. And we know that also anxiety, depression, all these, all the negative effects on our on our physical self and mental self, is just temporary. You know, we yeah, can have good moments in life, and we can always turn to those good moments and say, "Hey, this is where this is where I was, and now look where I am." You know, and I've got the tools now to navigate those days quicker and get to the place where you know you feel comfortable. Yeah, I feel like everything you said, I totally agree. It's like, it's you. You said in like the most perfect way to describe. It. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it, for myself as well on my journey, 
uh, I had to go through a lot of those traumatic experiences to be where I am right now. Like to be in front of a camera, to be in front of, uh, you know, posting my my socials, you know, just trying to help somebody else. I could have never done that if I didn't, f I didn't work to find myself. It was very yeah. hard work. It was like some days it's just, you know, soul crushing and it's just like despairing and you're like emotional, but you know the work you're doing today will, will reap its rewards tomorrow or even you know, whenever it does, but the hard work is, a lot of people say hard work pays off, you know, you <laughs> only yeah. have to actually do the hard work. Yeah. That's when you, that's when you know you'll get the, that reward. Yeah, and I think sometimes people will get scared to start or will like have that, that like, what if it goes wrong? But like, what if it yeah. goes right? What if, I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen to exactly. be honest? I feel like that's if, right. It's the what if. Yeah, but that that's yeah. always gonna like yeah. stop you from starting. But like, like, just start. I think that's how I did it. I mean, I I never like growing up. I never thought I was I was pretty or anything like that. So it was like, like, what if they make fun of me? Like, what if they think like, oh, she probably thinks she's she's this and that. Like, I feel like moving to a different country was everything. Like. I didn't have that people to be a distraction. I didn't know anyone. So that's, that was honestly so good. But if you still are in that place with all of that people, like, you just know, like, those are not the right people right. to be with. Yeah. Yeah. People are like, we say, for example, yeah. friendships are like seasons, right? They yeah. They always, always changing. And like, I feel like the people that used to really like make fun of what I used to do, like now they're like, Oh, you've done so much. Like, you, you've gone pretty far. Because they will... So, going back, like, when I was young, I was a mess, to be honest. I... When I was in, I uh, think, sixth grade or seventh grade, I lost that year. Like, I didn't pass the final exam of math. So I had to repeat the whole year. And that was also, like, a very bad experience for me. And I also put a lot of, like... Like, not only for me, but, like, for my parents, they were, like, oh, my God, you're going in such a bad route. You're not going to go be going great. Like, so I was now in the same grade as my brother. So it was, like, the judgment I had, it was, like, huge. But thank God that COVID happened. And then I was, like, home. And I was, like, like this. So, like, I was just doing the work and doing everything. But I didn't have to do, really deal with the people. Like, I had to, like, see my actual friends and classmates in another class right, right it was like really hard but at the same time like i i really i don't know i just i don't even know how i managed to go through that but i feel like that was also a reason why i wanted to prove myself that that didn't define what i was going to be yeah. today yeah. or what where i was going so everyone in school thought i was like a lost cause like i was a mess i, I was always causing trouble too so a lot of people in school are really like shocked to where I am and like while they were in high school and doing all of that I was in shows and in events and stuff like this so sometimes they will write mean things to me remember where you came from or other ones will be like oh you were such a great friend like I really miss you let me know when you're coming back so we can meet but whenever I was there they were never talking to me so it, those, are, those are the really, same friend now on the side of that you have this you have this presence and you have this following now all of a sudden you've become a person that they wanna you know associate with. But you know yourself that those people were never good for you in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, it's about now yeah, it's 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 a tough one. It's a tough one to to manage, especially uh you know, at a young age as well, you know, given that you've accomplished so much already. Um, a lot of people can't really accept that. You know, that you've done so well for yourself going through what you've gone through and but it's not it's not a, a projection on you it's it's actually their insecurities that actually you know are projected but i yeah. think you have, yeah. you have good support you have good uh grounding and good support from your mom here i mean uh, she's 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 pretty a, a unique uh, individual and she gives you them i think she gives you the confidence to be who you are right yeah she i feel like she never doubt what I was doing and I think that's something like in a sense I always try to make her proud 
like whatever I was dancing, I always make sure like I get first place, so I will make her proud most of the time. That she would, like my goal was like I want to make my mom proud, and so that was kind of like a way that I saw it too because she was working so much she didn't have all the things she have now so she was kind of absent in that time right and so I was like always doing something outside of home because like I really wanted to prove her that I was doing something good and I feel like she's always been there like very supportive she always trusts in what I'm doing she never like oh but what if you fail like what if you like miss your chance like what if you're wasting these years they're like so important like why didn't you just go to a secure um college and then get like like a job and i'm also very grateful for that it's like you can see like there's more yeah no that's amazing and i think i think your 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 journey has been quite an inspirational one i think for someone so young uh you still have like you know you have the world at your at your feet right now, and um, I think you're gonna go really far. And uh, you know, I wish you, you know, nothing but uh, the best. And I think we're gonna see you in in you know in fashion shows and you know, you know, up there. Really yeah, I really hope so. I feel like I'm pretty high hopes. Yeah. No, you should set you set high standards for yourself, and you know, goals are goals are important. And you have dreams, yeah. and you should you should do everything you can to actually reach those dreams and. I think um, you know your your journey is like I said like it's truly inspirational. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I just want to come back to you know your your fashion. Your you know how you got when you were into fashion. Like, were there any like challenges like that actually besides like the castings that where you got rejected and stuff? Like, was there anything like where you felt like okay, this world is like is quite something different, and you like you you felt a bit anxious. Yeah, so I feel like in the fashion industry, there's a lot of competition and you need to know how to stand out from everyone else better. And like, I'm probably not that good to be doing this. So I'm like, no, like she's doing that. Like she doesn't have the same path as you have. So that also really helped like to see that because someone is doing more than you doesn't mean that you should be there too because you don't have like the same life. You don't have the same path and we all have different timings. So aside from like that struggle within myself, I was also looking at how other people was getting um, invites to events and I wasn't. So, so I was like kind of like frustrated, but I will work harder to get it. And then I will eventually get more stuff. But yeah, it's hard to stand out in an industry that's so full of like competition. Yeah, it's competitive. And it's feel like I'm doing something different to what I'm doing now because I don't think I see anyone doing what I'm doing and if they do walks they usually do like more like basic outfits but like what I want to do is like they, it's always something like shiny or it's something like different so it's it makes it more like interesting too right right and what's your what's your personal style what do you feel is your personal style uh, honestly I don't know how to define it but it, I will say like I always try to wear something that's like cute, like in a sense, like very light colors and a lot of like mesh and a lot of like shine, a lot of like rhinestones or glitter or anything like that. I'm always wearing something like that and I feel like it kind of depends on the day, like how I'm feeling because sometimes I feel like a lot like wearing black, which is completely different to what I'm usually wearing, right. but always like a very like feminine look too. Like it's it's very more towards that right. side. And then any uh, any designers or any companies that we probably know of that you've, you've worked for? Um, I would say like mainly they're all local. Okay. So they're very um, uh, Canadian designers. They're also like very big to be in like a Vogue and New York and all of those places in like Fashion Week, in Toronto Fashion Week. It's like um, signed by Dahlia and a bunch of like French designers. I don't know how to pronounce them to be honest. Um, but I, yeah, I worked for a show for Maserati, which was also pretty big. Oh wow! It was like sponsored by them, and it was full of like cars. 
and it was pretty big but it was my last minute i didn't even know i was gonna walk that day but it was like they reached me out on instagram like oh we'd love to have you in a show so i was like oh okay and i went i didn't even have to do the casting which is great okay. going to castings is very stressful too it's now right but, yeah i can imagine but you've always you've obviously got like the experience now in castings right and sense their their confidence and like somehow like the aura i don't know how to explain it because they're so like they you know like uh body language is also so important yeah, so wherever i go i try to have a good posture and like be nice and like smile to everyone and not be like super serious and that also helps a lot because sometimes if you're shy you're always like crunching and like crossing your arms that also makes you look insecure so i always try to have that like body language and being mindful of what i'm i'm doing because i've seen like how it reflects on other people right right oh, that's amazing like i'm pretty sure we'll see you in uh new york fashion week so in the french fashion week we'll probably see you you know on the runways you know at least we'll <laughs> say i know that girl <laughs> No, you are, you are. Yeah. What? Okay. So is that the short term goal? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Are you, and how close are you to getting into that show? I'm not sure if I'm gonna walk this season. Okay. Because, like, I will have to go for a really long time. So I'll have to go to New York for almost two weeks. But this time I want to go into shows and kind of like, sometimes I like to, I prefer to go into shows and see what's going on right. and kind of like analyze the place and how it all works. So after, whenever I go to castings, like I know what to do and I don't waste my time in a way. Right. So would you like intern for, for like a fashion house, you know, just to see how the inner workings are? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go to like attend the shows and see it from the outside, but I feel like you could you also learn a lot just from looking at that. Like, right. let's say if I want to go to a Michael Kors show, right. like they walk different to a Tommy Hilfiger show, so you need to like see what type of walk each designer has and which, like, if they chose the models, there's a reason for that. So right. you wanna kind of like have something to do with what they already have if that makes sense because when i went to toronto fashion week for the first time i i even bought my own tickets like i i wasn't invited just yet that was like the, one of the first events i went so when i when i got there you could see like the girls that had the more is like powerful and strong walk they walked so many times and the ones that were like more like the traditional walk they walk just one or two shows Right. So you see what like differentiates them to others. Yeah. It's like the first time that I went, I only walked once and it was because I was doing like more of a normal walk and then this time I walked like five times because I was doing a different walk. So you, you, you feel like you analyze how things work and then you put them in together. Yeah, I think it's like with any craft or any like any profession you gotta do your research, you gotta do your homework, uh, and see what works best for you, right? Yeah. You gotta practice that. I'm sure you like I'm sure within your socials also like I mean like your 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 posts and stuff, like those are practicing moments. You you you're putting yourself out there and you're like practicing certain like skills that you I mean they are skills because not everybody can walk around me, right? Not everybody's yeah. confident enough to be in that that space. So I think you you've got the right attitude, you've got the right mind. And presence, and you've got the right uh, stuff to actually, uh, you know, go re go really far. And I, you know, you really see people who are actually driven um, into their craft. And I think you're one of those people who actually like will get very far. Like, just honestly speaking, that's just my view of it. Yeah, thank you. I think it's so nice to hear when people are like saying that to me. To be honest. Yeah. No. I mean, you. I mean, you've, you've come a long way, and you're like really passionate about your craft. And I think. You know, you you have the world at your feet, and I I think you're gonna be really really uh, a force to reckon with, actually. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, thanks. Oh, you are. <laughs> so, 
like I, I like to do this at the end of my shows and, and ask like, okay, what's next? What, like, what do you see? What's next for, for Bridget? I, right now, I want to work in new things and like experience more and stuff. So I just want to take the leap to go into New York without knowing anything. Not only that, but I want to start doing more clothes on my own because every time I get something, I need to tailor it every time. Nothing ever like fits me how I want it to fit or whenever I see something, I always change it. So I think for me, I want to try to do a little bit of like more designs right. too. And kind of like right now, I really want talking to my audience so we can like connect better too. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's a challenging one because I, I think I struggle with that as well. Because sometimes I'm like, okay, what do I say? And then I, I, don't, I don't put it out because I'm like yeah. procrastinate about it. But then I feel to myself, okay, I have something on my mind. I'm just going to say it. But however it comes out, it's fine. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, mm -hmm. And the more you do, the more you speak uh, or the more posts you put out like that, the more confidence you get and the better you, you become. Yeah, and after it, it becomes natural. Yeah. Like uh, the more you do it, the easier it will get. So. Yeah, hundred percent. No, but thank you so much for for your time, Bridget. Uh, and I wish you all the best. Can't wait to see you. See so what's next for you. And uh, guys, please do me a favor and go and subscribe to Bridget's uh, socials. You know, show her your love. Um, and yeah. Until the next one. Thank you so much, guys. Enjoy. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. <laughs>